thank you so much. I'm absolutely delighted to be here with my friend, Sheena. We should tell how we met later. later. <laughs> but first off, I want to congratulate you on writing such an engaging, accessible, and helpful book. You know, I did pick it up over the weekend, and I thought, oh my gosh, am I going to enjoy reading a book by a professor at the business school? <laughs> is it going to be like a meal of eat your lima beans, or is it going to be a hot fudge sundae? And I was so pleasantly surprised at how good the ice cream is. Oh, thank uh, God. And the main reason <laughs> is because it is filled with such fabulous anecdotes. You know, this book is in many ways so revolutionary because you're taking the practices that we have all thought were the best way to innovate, and one after the next, you just topple them over. And one of the practices that we all think we should all be doing if we are trying to innovate um, is brainstorming with a group. Well, you just slash brainstorming to bits. <laughs> we should not be brainstorming. So explain why. Well, in a nutshell, if you think about brainstorming, it's, it, I call it a sort of bias-making exercise, a group bias-making exercise. It's a collection of a lot of biases that happen. When you look at what people generate as individuals, because they're not being immediately influenced by everybody else talking, they engage in more independent thought. I mean, there's lots of problems with brainstorming, but simply put, when you're having to think in a group, there's just way too many biases that are occurring that's preventing you from actually thinking alone such that you can actually leverage the diversity of thought that exists in that group. You outlined six steps yes. that people should take when they are trying to solve a problem in business uh, or in science, uh, engineering. Um, and uh, this is a, a very time-consuming exercise, and yet um, it's astonishingly effective. Uh, one of the first steps, maybe the first step, is called choice mapping. Yes. Well, that's my alternative to brainstorming. But you're alone. You're making this little map of your choices by yourself, and you're writing it down. So explain True. why this is such an important step to mm -hmm. begin with. Think of a choice map as a sort of template that you can use for generating ideas, rather than asking yourself, you know, how do I solve my problem? Like, how do I take advantage of chat GBT now to find my career um, or to change the way I do my job? What you're going to instead do is create a little matrix. So at the top, you're going to put, so what's the problem I'm trying to solve? Then you break it down into uh, what are, say, three uh, challenges or problem, subparts of this problem that I need to solve for. And now what you do is you search, not just in your own industry, obviously you want to know what's the best practice in your own industry, but now you search in other places, other industries, um, perhaps other points in time, as to how they had solved for this, for each of those subproblems. And now you take those different tactics and you combine them. That's how I actually think ideation is done best, because that's when you're able to both optimize on making sure that whatever idea you generate is useful, uh, but also novel. Uh, I don't know about you, but I hang on every word she says. Thank you, Sheena, for I this. I want to thank you, Leslie, for doing this. Thank you so much. You're, I was petrified at the idea of you interviewing me. Oh, you me. should be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to thank all of you guys for being so generous and coming to see us. So well, I you. think you're the generous one for sharing your story with us. I'm sure everybody agrees with that. And, uh, and the book, I recommend the book.